One test, one more testimony in song. We ask the uh, uh, do businesses to step forward and render the item in song this morning. Uh, there's nothing wrong. 2020 is a new year. We can put our hands together for, for the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. God bless you, saints. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crowns and worship you. Oh, be lifted above all other very purpose that we were created amen is to worship his holy name amen you love the lord this morning amen i just feel like bowing in his presence and giving all the glory and all the praise I, I just feel like singing the whole morning amen that's just the way i feel i don't know if you feel that way if you've got a song if you've got a melody in your heart amen knowing where god has brought you from in 2019 knowing that where he's taking you to amen blessed be his holy name. Let's stand to our feet and let's sing about the love of God this morning. Amen. Blessed be his holy name. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pain can never tell it goes beyond the highest stars and reaches through the lowest, the guilty pain, the guilty pain, bowed down with care. God gave. To his 
the next verse. Oh, love of God. Oh, love of God. How rich and How measureless. How measureless. How measureless. How The saints and Can you sing the next verse? When holy times, when holy times shall pass away, and earthly and earthly thrones and kingdoms fall. When men who yearn refuse to pray on the rocks and hills, but one thing is sure, God's love so sure shall still and pure, oh measureless and strong, oh measureless. Redeeming grace to Adam's rest. This is my favorite verse. Could we with thee? Could we with thee? Ocean fill and where the sky a parchment man with every song, where every star on earth a queen and every man and every man. It's just not possible to write the love of God. To the love to write the love of God above it would drain the ocean no could the scroll no stretch those words from sky to the love of God, love of God, how rich and pure, how Give him 
praise this morning. Put your hands together for him. He is worthy. He is worthy this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we come before your throne of grace. Your love is so great. Your love cannot be quantified. Your love stretches from eternity to eternity. Lord, that even if we turn the oceans to ink and every quail on earth to be a writing pen and every man changes to become a scribe, oh God, and make the skies the paper in which we write the love of God. The skies cannot contain the whole. The scroll cannot contain the whole. Every paper will not contain the whole. Lord Jesus, for your love, ensure it forever. Lord Jesus, you loved us as sinners. You loved us when nobody could see any good in us. But you said, I will go down the horizontal rainbow. I will come down for I love her. She is mine. Dear Master, we are standing in your presence. Knowing that he brought us out of the married clay. He put us on a rock to stay. You dipped us, oh God, on a great fountain with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and we stand in your presence blameless, sinless, oh God, without condemnation for a work that was finished. You loved us so much. You gave your only begotten son. You could not withhold yourself. You had to become man. You took the dreadful cross, went up Gogotha's hill, Lord Jesus, and died a cruel death. Father, and say, it is finished. I've paid the price. I have redeemed her to me. She is mine. Lord, I'm glad I belong to a God that is merciful. I'm glad I belong to a God that is gracious. Have your own way this morning. We pray, dear Father, that you may have your own way. Come speak to our hearts. Take me, hide me behind the shadow of the cross. Make me so narrow in the wisdom of men. Let me not be seen. Let only Jesus be seen. Let him only be magnified. Oh God, you said when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil that's on their heart shall be lifted up. Dear Father, may the veils that veil our hearts be lifted up so that we may see you face to face. We thank you this morning. Heal the sick. Deliver the bound. Be merciful to those that need mercy. Forgive the sinner. Oh God, provide for them that are seeking. Answer the questions of those that have questions this morning. Praise, I commit this service in your hands. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Oh my. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A happy New Year to you once again. Amen. It's the grace of God that uh, we are alive today. Um, and let's put our hands together for good singing and playing this morning. They've done excellently. That was very good. Amen. Sometimes I always complain, but if they do good, they've done good. And this was beautiful. Amen. And, um, you know, God is so gracious to us. That he has given us yet an opportunity to live better than what we did last year. To do better, to represent him better, to be better candidates of the rapture. Uh, that's how we should take every day. Amen. Uh, I've got some visitors' names that has been brought here. We have uh, Brother Maroja and family. I'm going to ask them to stand. Brother Maroja. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Godfrey. You may be seated. So, 
I go to some places, you know, and I meet some people very far away. And they tell me, do you know Brother Godfrey? I say, yes. They say, he was just here. <laughs> so far from Africa, amen. Such a blessed man of God. You're welcome. Uh, we have Brother Chiweza and family. I'm going to ask Brother Chiweza and family to stand so we can welcome him. Oh, my. God bless you richly. You're welcome. Thank you. You may be seated. We have Brother Obey. I'm going to ask Brother Obey to stand. God bless you. Oh, Brother Obey. God bless you, Brother Obey. Uh, I was one of the escorts at his wedding. And, you know, uh, it was a different type of a wedding because we did an all night. The, you know, these are young men escorting the brother to be married in the morning and we had an all night we did not sleep we prayed all night and just in the morning just bathed and went to the to the wedding occasion no wonder the wedding is still standing amen god bless you brother obey amen praise god we have brother noel and family the noel and family amen oh he's alone God bless you. Now, this one is my friend. Uh, we were together at university. Uh, if his family was here, you would have seen the mystery. We testified to his wife. You see, at university. Is she here? Where is Sister Joanna? Cry room. Oh, Sister, I would have loved you. Yeah, come, Sister Joanna. You see? That's Sister Joanna, amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we testified to Sister Joanna at Nast University. It was an amazing experience. Uh, the day that Sister Joanna made a decision to be, to be a part of the message, that's the same day that Brother Kevin made a decision also to come to the Lord. I remember we were sitting there, I'm, I'm testifying, and Brother Noel is... He's showing me the church age book. He's saying, talk about Brother Branham. <laughs> talk about Brother Branham. These people are always asking me about Brother Branham. <laughs> and we, we answered all questions by the grace of God. And I'm so glad to see them standing. He's also a preacher of the gospel. You will hear him one day. And Brother Obey also is a preacher of the gospel. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Amen. <laughs> I'll tell you this, this one. The last message I preached at, at, at college, I preached on uh, a mixed multitude and I was blasting. You know, you know, don't come here wearing pink suits and you know. <laughs> I used to be very hard. So, on my courtship announcement, I was wearing a pink tie <laughs> and Brother Noah came to me <laughs> He says, you remember your last sermon about pink clothes? <laughs> My, I said, well, you know, marriage changes a lot of things. But we appreciate God so much. Amen. We, we really stood at university. Because we realized that was the devil's playground. And we had so many converts. And so much, you know, progress in the Lord. And the Lord really kept us during those trying times. Amen. We also have Brother Tafadzu. I'm going to ask Brother Tafadzu to stand so we can welcome him. God oh, bless you, Brother Tafadzu. You're welcome. Amen. And right behind, right at the back, I can see Brother Owen, my friend. You are with, who are you with? Okay, all of you stand. Amen. So, so we can welcome you. Praise. Oh, and Brother George. Amen. God bless you. Brother Owen is like a brother to me. We, we are like blood brothers. He is my best friend that became my blood brother. You see, he is the one that brought the spoken word that made me believe this message at school. Amen. 
So it's quite an emotional day for me. Uh, God is so gracious. I've got all my roots present in church. <laughs> so it's good, amen, uh, to, to see Brother Owen. He's a preacher, but he doesn't preach anymore. I don't know what's happening. Maybe we should find a sister for him quickly by the grace of God and uh, see how maybe it can quicken his voice back again to the pulpit. Amen. Amen. Any visitors, uh, maybe you can stand so we can acknowledge you this morning. Amen. If we have any other visitors, you can stand. No visitors. Oh, God bless you, brother. Oh, God bless you richly. Is there a mystery? Eh? My. Both of you stand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together for them. The vision will speak. Amen. God richly bless you. Amen. I'm so happy. Let's stand up on our feet. Amen. This morning. Let's open our Bibles to the book of uh, Second Chronicles. We had a wonderful time at uh, the cross overnight. My, the brothers were so anointed. And uh, we have got uh, a new drum set. Some brothers were inspired. Amen. And they put runs together to make it happen. Praise the Lord. And we want to say God richly bless you. This time it's the musicians that got inspired to do that. I won't mention their names. One is tall, one is short. Praise the Lord. God richly bless you. Amen. Uh, Second Chronicles 20 verses 20. So this is year 2020. So Chronicles 2020. The prophet says, you say you've got vision 2020, but it isn't. If you had the word in you, then that's vision 2020. So us seeing ourselves in the word, that is vision 2020. So we want to speak on this. I find it fitting with our subject this morning. It says, And they rose early in the morning and forth, went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord, so shall ye be established. Believe in his prophets, socially prosper the secret of prosperity is in believing in the prophet the secret of being established is believing in the lord let's open luke chapter 4 luke chapter 4 god is so gracious believe in his prophets and he shall prosper Verses 14, the Bible reads thus. Look for verses 14. Look is the only scribe of the New Testament that never walked with Jesus of the four Gospels. He was not there. He was not a Jew. He was a Gentile. He was a Samaritan. He came and he had to study about how Jesus he had lived. That's why you find his record speaks more to the Gentiles than the records of others. Of the book of the Gospels, you'll find it is the book of Luke and the book of John that will address you in a more direct way. Because John does not write pertaining to the Jews. He writes from a prophetic point of view. He's the person that writes the in between the lines. What John writes is the things that Jesus would tell him while he was lying on the bosom of Jesus. So he's got some in between the lines that others do not pick up. But the book of Luke 
studies the life of Jesus to address the Gentiles. Now let us hear, look what he says. Verses 14, it says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and they went out a fame of him through all the region and about. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the seventh Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And he was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened to him. Now, he says, and he began to say unto them, this day this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. And all bear witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And he said, is not this, and they said, is this, is this not Joseph's son? And he said unto them, you will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. He said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the day of Isaiah, of, of Elijah, when the heavens was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land, but unto none of them was Elijah sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in the time of Elisha, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue were when they heard these things were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him into a brow of the hill whereupon their city was built that they may cast him down headlong. They wanted him to fall head first and die. But he passing through the midst of them went his way. May God add blessings to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. So some of the things I'll be, I'll be thinking of it before I come to church. And when I stand here, if I don't write it down, I forget it. Because when I see your faces, there's a fear that comes upon me. Yeah. I can never get used to standing here. You know, uh, no matter how sinful people may be, they're still the bride of Jesus Christ. So, and knowing that this place is is the closest place to heaven. There is a certain nervousness that comes with the responsibility of preaching the gospel. So, um, I forgot to thank uh, the trustees. They put up these fans. And we really appreciate their efforts. And, you know, there is many things that happen in between the lines. And in between services, sometimes people are at home. They come, they fix whatever needs to be fixed. And we really want to appreciate that. And may God richly bless them and our deacons also for standing in the gap all the time. Amen. We really, really appreciate you, our ministers, for the relentless work that you do. May God richly bless you and may you not tire. Uh, I promised God and I promise you, when I get rich, you will be rich also. Amen. I cannot stand to see ministers suffering when, you know, they are laboring in the house of the Lord. 
And I just pray that God can strengthen us and give us an absolute resolved vision to get the work of the Lord moving forward. And we want to appreciate our sisters that uh, organize themselves to clean this place every time. Uh, we really appreciate that. And there's no brothers involved. They organize themselves and they make things happen every week. We just come in here, we find the place is dandy, sparkling. It is really a great thing and may God bless you. And also uh, uh, for cooking for us, Sister Dube and, and, the, and the team and everybody. We really appreciate all of you uh, for, for what you do for us. We, I appreciate the small things. I'm actually a person that is touched with small things, you know, getting in the office. I find a new towel sometimes. It, it just moves my heart. So there's so much that I could say, uh, but may God richly bless you. Amen. I see Brother Hoffis is here and his wife. They are not really visitors. They're always here. God richly bless you. Amen. Uh, we appreciate God so much for everything. Just know that if you have done something for the Lord, if you have done something for me, the encouragements, uh, I appreciate you. And I appreciate the young ones. You see these small boys, uh, especially the ones with the phones. What these young ones do when I travel, they send me messages, you know. Pastor, how are you? Are you all right? You know. And I'm thinking, this is a small boy. Are you doing all right? We really miss you. You know, we're praying for you. And it really touches me. And may God richly bless them. And may God strengthen them. Amen. God bless you all. Uh, I want to speak this morning. Uh, I know we have been speaking on uh, the three main characters of the Bible. And we, we had not even gotten to Matthew 25. We had successfully moved from 13 to 24. We're now getting into 25. And we wanted to marry that with Esther, the book of Esther, and show Ahasuerus, Esther, and Memucan. And we wanted also then to conclude it in the book of Revelation, where we show Jesus Christ, John, and the signifying angel. But I felt so present upon my heart when I was in Ghana. Uh, I didn't know what title to give it. And yesterday, the Lord just led me to just preach it in, in the form of a question. To say, is William Branham the voice of God? Is William Branham the voice of God? Amen. Uh, you see, we need to establish an authority. We, we, we need to establish an authority. The reason why we say marry somebody who believes the same thing with you is because we want to establish an authority over your marriage where both of you can trust an authority. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, at work, you don't just come and they say, every one of you that's working here is a supervisor. There will be disaster. You see, everyone is signing off their leave. Everyone is doing this. There's no one to report. You say, oh, you, you, I'm the highest authority. You can't even report me. I can report you to me. You see? We need to establish an authority. When an authority has been established, then it becomes easy. If a brother and a brother have a problem in the church, they know there's an authority they can go to and say, Pastor, me and brother so-and-so, we have an issue. And they know if the pastor says something, then the issue has been solved. Now, they can only take what the pastor has said as a way of solving the issue if they believe the pastor to be authority. If you don't believe that pastor to be the authority, there's going to be a problem again. Do you see what I'm saying? So, uh, that's why you can drive a very nice car. You can have more money in the account. But they can be, you can be maybe, let's say, in a Bugatti Ferrari. And there is a policeman who is in a Nissan Sunny. You see? And you're driving your Bugatti. When you get to where this man with a Nissan Sunny stands, if he raises his hand, I don't care how much money you have. You will have to stop 
Because you are recognizing the authority in this man. It's not about what materialistic things he's got around him. But it's the authority of who he is. So a nation is built and its structures are built around authority. The reason why we need to know whether William Branham is the voice of God or not is we want to establish an authority. If William Branham is not the voice of God, we have to find what is the voice of God and submit to that. Are you hearing me? That's right. This is a very important question because we are living in treacherous times. We are living in deadly times. The Bible says, believe in God and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Now, the prophetic hierarchy has been placed to be believed in. You cannot say, I believe in what he says, not him. No. The Bible requires one to believe in the prophet. That's why in 1946, this man, William Branham, he went into a cave and he was given a commission that with a little gift, he was going to preach to all the world without grade 7 education. He was told he's going to pray for kings until his own pastor said, how can it be possible you, Billy, without education, speak, pray for who? Kings and potentates. It's not possible. Are you hearing me? But the angel said something peculiar in that visit. He says, if you can get the people to believe in you. Many of you would say, why would he want the, him to be believed? Is it not that he's supposed to get the people to believe in Jesus? No. No. That would be anti-scripture. The Bible says, if they believe in the prophet, they shall prosper. So one of the things the angel came down for is to make sure the man he is giving a commission has believers in him. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We are separating boys from men. We are separating borderline from real. Are you hearing me? Yes. Believe in the prophet. That's what the Bible says. So, we find a peculiar situation in Luke chapter 4, verses 14. It says, Jesus is returning in power. This is after 30 years. All we know about this man is a carpenter. In fact, he's not really a qualified carpenter. He's a carpenter's son. His father is the prominent one. Are you hearing me? We, we, we actually know that these men, they've got customers that would come to them and complain. My table is taking long. To Jesus. This is the part that people don't want to hear sometimes. I'm going to preach it this morning. They would come to Jesus. Jesus would be fixing a table. He would hold a nail and you would want to hit the nail the nail would leave his hand and fall on the ground. And Jesus would have to bend over, get the nail, and try to hit it again. But this man is God. Why did he need to learn about carpentry? Why couldn't he just pick a table into existence? Why did he have to wait for customers? Why? Maybe, maybe there's something that you don't understand. When we spoke on the bridge, we read a quotation on the bridge between the church edges and the seals. Brother Branham says, 
Jesus attained his kinsman redeemership. Uh, did you hear that? I know we preach kinsman redeemer. No, but redeemership. When we talk about redeemership, you, you see, we, we say you're an entrepreneur when you have qualified. But there is a time when you are in the entrepreneurship. It is when you are in the process of attaining the qualification to be called an entrepreneur. When we say, we, we, we say you're an, an apprentice when you have finished. But when we call apprenticeship, apprenticeship is when you have somebody that is qualified. That teaches you the process to become an apprentice. Are you hearing me? Jesus he had to go through the redeemership process. Because for him to be a near kinsman to you, he had to experience everything that you go through. So if it's about patience, he has to go through the, the full patience that man goes with without the attribute of God. I don't know if you are hearing me. I'm saying God created himself a male sail and an egg for the woman. And he created a body which was 100% God. But he was not dwelling in it yet. Because he wanted it to go through the, the, the apprenticeship of kingsman redeemership. So he had to be selling tables. He had to be begging customers. He he had to be playing with other kids. And them scolding at him. And him coming back home crying. That's why it's difficult. It's easy for you to believe Jesus today. You were not there. This is a person who grew up with other kids. He was talking to them the same way. that He, he learned obedience. Is it not scripture? He learned obedience through the things he suffered. Are you hearing me? He is learning life. Why God is learning life? Because he's going through kingsman redeemership. He has to be 100% human. Because the qualifications of redemption requires him to be a relation to humanity. And to be a relation to humanity is not just to become an angel one day that is perfect. And No, that's not it. He's got to overcome. He's got to be tempted. He's got to be tried. He's got to be hungry. Eh? Jesus was hungry. Why couldn't he just fill his stomach? There are laws. There are principles of life. And the principles of life says, brother, if you are hungry, it does not say pray. It says eat food. Those are the laws of life set by God. If you are hungry, don't pray. Eat. If you want to pray, you can pray. After you finish praying, break the fast. Eat again. Otherwise, you remain hungry. Those are the laws and principles of God. God has put beard in a man. But that beard will not pop out until a certain age. God has put a baritone in a man. That baritone will not come out until a certain age. He wants you to go through the process so that when you come to a certain place where you manifest what you were supposed to, you have gone through the process because we cannot have a small boy like this acting like an old man like me. This is why you need to be patient with your children as they are growing. Do you see what I'm saying? Don't expect a small teenager to have the maturity of an older person. They cannot. They cannot. That's why even in the qualification of a pastor, they say not a novice. You see? You have preached two sermons, three sermons. I want to be a pastor. No. No. You've got to suffer certain things before you can assume the role. You might have the gift. You might already be a pastor. But time... That's why even John the Baptist could not declare Jesus to be the Messiah the day that he came. He just said, one is standing in your midst. He didn't even know himself. 
He didn't know. Because he said, if I see the sign, then I shall tell you who it is. And tomorrow he's pointing at his own cousin brother. To say, there goes. That's why even for John, it became difficult after he declared it. It became difficult. To say, hey, this is my cousin. Now I'm in jail. He's not coming through for me. Could it be him or it's another person? Do you see what I'm saying? But John was not declaring by facial expression. John could only declare by the fulfillment of the sign that God had shown him. And that sign could not be shown up until the age of 30. You say amen? amen? So I want you to follow me now. So now the Bible says, Jesus on verses 15, he had been teaching in their synagogues. It was his custom to preach in synagogues. This is during the first and second pool of Jesus Christ. He had doors opened. Brother Jesus, come and preach. He would come, brother, and preach. Heal their sick, deliver their bound. Uh, cripples would walk. That was his custom. And he came to Nazareth. Eh? Where he had been brought up the scripture. I was telling the brothers in Ghana. I said the scripture, the Bible, is a small book. The Bible. The things about what happened around the life of the prophets and Jesus himself are so many. That if we were to say, let it everything be written. Every service day would have seven brothers here trying to open the book to say, can you open this scripture? Because this Bible could not contain everything. So what I want you to see, the text that was accommodated to be written, it is the vital and most important text that should be written. So there is nothing that is written in the Bible that is redundant. Are you hearing? So it says, he came to Nazareth where he was brought up, not where he was born. Because the Bible says the king of Judah shall be born in Bethlehem. That's why the night before he was born, there is a declaration. Go back to where you are supposed to, where, to your places of origin. And Joseph has to go to Bethlehem of Judah and they give birth to Jesus and the following day they come back to Nazareth. It's not redundant. Don't worry. Why? God is fulfilling scripture, but he's not fulfilling it the way that people were thinking. People were thinking that this Messiah was supposed to be born in Bethlehem and grow up in Bethlehem. His birthplace is Bethlehem, but he never stayed a day. He went back to Nazareth, where the father was residing. And he grows up in Nazareth. That's why when Nathaniel came, he had a question. And the question of Nathaniel was a Bible question. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Because there is no scripture in the Old Testament that talks about Nazareth being a place where a Messiah can be born. I'm going somewhere. Are you hearing me? That's why Jesus did not rebuke the question of Nathaniel. Others would ask questions and you would not answer. Or you would answer somehow. Addressing the demon that was in them. So if there is a Bible question, Brother Branham says, there must be a Bible answer. You see? And Philip didn't know. He says, you know what? According to what I've read also, there is actually nothing good that comes out of Nazareth. But all I can say is come and see. Come and see. Because this man, all we know is Nazareth. But he was not born in Nazareth. He was brought up in Nazareth. Now, this Nazareth where he was brought up is where he is now going back. And when he goes back to Nazareth, when they see him, the one who is preaching that day has to sit down. Because the miracle performer has come. Are you hearing me? Sorry, brother, I hope today you will not take the service. Brother Jesus has come. Even you would be happy. Ah, brother Jesus has come to perform miracles again. 
And he did not come with the Bible. Uh, I'm not saying don't come to church without a Bible. But I am telling you, Jesus did not need it. Because he was the Bible. So, ah, something just came fresh there. Listen to me. It is the nature of God to be a borrower. He did not come with a womb. He borrowed the womb of Mary. He did not come with the Bible. He borrowed the Bible of the high priest. He did not come with a grave. He borrowed the grave of Joseph of Arimathea. After he borrows, he gives back. There is nothing that Jesus ever took from men. And he never gave back. Even at the feast where he was preaching and they were hungry, he didn't come with food. He borrowed and he gave back. And Brother Branham says, borrow him your faith this morning. If you can borrow him your faith, he will give it back multiplied. Say amen. Praise God. Borrow him your little faith. Borrow him. Borrow him and watch him. What he does. Is that right? Now, when he takes the Bible, he takes it and he does this. He opens it. And it opened to Isaiah chapter 61. Huh? And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering sight of sight to the blind and to set all the, uh, at liberty them that are bruised. So he's reading Isaiah chapter 1 and 2. But chapter 2, he finishes at part A of chapter 2. Where there is a coma, Jesus comes and puts a full stop. The mystery of the coma and the full stop. Jesus puts a full stop where there is a coma. Scripture reading is finished. Now the Bible says, watch. And he closed the book. I mean, they could have just said, and he gave the book back to the priest. But he did not just give the book back to the priest. He closed the book. Number one. Eh? And he gave it back to the minister. So the minister, after Jesus left, he continued preaching. He continued preaching from what? From a closed book. The book is only open in Jesus. Everywhere else, the book is closed. That's why he takes a closed book, he opens it, he closes it, and he gives it back. This one continues preaching, but from a closed book. Oh my God. Now I want you to watch the second part. And the eyes of all of them were fastened on him. So, the eyes of these people, where are they? They are on, on Jesus. And then Jesus says to them, watch this. Everyone is looking at Jesus. He says, the book is closed. There is no more book in front of him. He says, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. Where were their eyes? So he's saying that <laughs> uh, yeah. the scripture is not in that book where the the priest is still left with the writing. The spirit of the Lord is up. If the, if the priest opens the book, he will see where it's written. But he can't see where it's written. It's written here where their eyes are fastened. That's why he's saying the scripture that we read is fulfilled in your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, 
But is this not the son of Joseph? <laughs> How come he is now saying the spirit of the Lord? He is saying the scripture has become him. Do you see what I'm saying? And Jesus said to them, Ye will surely say this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. He says, you want to ask me to do the miracles that were being done in other places. Hallelujah. Listen, he says, and he says, but verily I say unto you, no prophet, no prophet is accepted in his own country. Amen. We are talking about Brother Branham. Amen. No prophet. The scripture cannot be broken. I know you want to be lighthearted. Don't be lighthearted. No prophet is accepted in his own country. Those in America that thought accepted Brother Branham did not. They think he is just one of the brothers. That's why they would take his picture together with other ten evangelists. Evangelist William Branham. Okay. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias. When the heavens were shut up three years and six months. When great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent. Uh, Serve unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon. Unto a woman that was a widow. Elijah had to be sent out of where he was staying. Because the people from where he was staying. They could not contain him. He had to go to Serepta, where there was a widow. Brother Branham says, she was of the caliber of Elijah. Yes. Brother Branham says, she was prepared for Elijah. When I say prepared, I'm not saying she, was, she prepared herself. No. She was a prepared vessel for Elijah. There is no man that can accept a prophet unless they were prepared to accept a prophet. He says, how many lepers were there in the days of Elisha? But only Naaman. One was the one that was saved. Naaman of all the lepers is the one that was prepared for Elisha. And we read in Luke 17 where it talks about those lepers how ten were healed. But, and Jesus says, go and show yourselves to the priest. The Bible says they went to show themselves to the priest. And it says, as they went, they were healed. Why were they healed? Because they obeyed what Jesus had said. Ten of them were healed. But one came back. Only one. Only one came back and said what? Worshipped him. And Jesus said, were they not ten that were healed? Where are the nine? Save this one that has come back. But Jesus, you never said come to me. You said go show yourselves to the priest. And we have done that. I said outside of Paul, the Samaritan leper was the first one to catch the revelation of Melchizedek. Because the Samaritan understood that this one who is sending us is a priest himself. And the Bible says, will thou be made whole? These ones were healed, but they were not made whole. But this one was made whole. Revelation is what brings healing. I'm no longer talking healing of the body now. Healing of the body, you can even get it at Makandiwa. Healing of the body, you can get it at a sangoma. But you'll be sick again. But healing of the soul, you can only get it at Jesus. That's why the scripture we read in Matthew, when he was asked, why do you preach to them in parables? He says, I preach in parables so that in seeing they may not see. Hearing they may not hear. Lest they hear and understand with their heart and I heal them. Jesus, we saw you sending away the Syrophoenician woman saying you have been sent only to the house of Israel to heal them. 
Healing of the body, Jesus gave it to everybody. But healing of the soul, he says, I'll speak in parables. I will talk about agriculture. I will talk about finances and let them go to church thinking that I'm an agriculture preacher. A sower went to sow. Eh? A man had five talents. There is a woman who had ten talents on her forehead. One of them got lost. Jesus is talking about domestic issues. That's what they thought. And she took a broom and she started sweeping. And he came to the industrials. He started saying, if a man has got a candle and he puts a light on it, does he put it under the table? He's not talking about candles and tables. Do you see what I'm saying? But he's talking, veiling the truth in parables so that they would think that is just stories. And, but he says, but in this day he has spoken in great... Okay, if you read the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it says, I have spoken in great plainness of speech. This is Paul. He says, when Moses was preached to them, they could not understand it because they had a veil on their heart. Do you see what I'm saying? He says, but even this day, when Moses is preached to them, they still don't understand it because the veil is on their heart. But nonetheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, their eyes shall be opened. He says, we speak in greatness of speech, plainness of speech. Why is he saying now today we speak in plainness of speech? Because the mystery is no longer hidden in parables. You see, in the parables, the mystery is hidden, not in plainness of speech. He does. That's why they kept saying, speak plainly so we can understand you. He never spoke plainly. But today, from the time of Paul to the time of William Branham, the message is preached very simple. Yes. But yet the secret is veiled in a parable. And the parable is a body of flesh. To say that the chief, the chief apostles, the first messenger to the Gentiles, is the very one that was killing the Christians. That is the mystery. The mystery of the word is veiled behind flesh. That's why Paul says follow. He does not say follow Christ. He says follow me. I'm asking whether William Branham is the voice of God or not. Paul says follow me. Forget about Jesus. I will be following Jesus. You. Follow. But you were killing, you were killing us. <laughs> Hallelujah. You say you would have believed. You would have not. I would have believed if I lived in the days of Paul. You are a liar. What you are doing today to the message of the hour is what you would have done in those days. How can this murderer without a wife? Paul didn't have a wife. He's a murderer. Somebody who is in jail writing us letters. Let him free himself first. Let him free himself first. He, he would come and sit with brothers that had walked with Jesus. And stay with them for months. And these brothers are trying to teach him the spoken word of Jesus. You know what Jesus was saying? The other time, I actually remember, we're now close to the Sea of Galilee. He said this to us. And Paul, after months, he says... I conferred with those brothers and I learned nothing from them. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. <laughs> if you have ever heard me preach today, I'm preaching. I'm, it's not jumping up and down. This is the message of the hour. I've gone to America. I've sat with the brothers that walked with Branham. They said many things about what they did together, but I learned nothing. I learned nothing of them. But where did I learn from? The pillar of fire. The same one. You cannot preach the mystery. Listen to me. You cannot preach the mystery unless you meet with the mystery. If you can preach here, the seventh seal, here, from joining quotation and quotation, it is death to the people. Unless you meet with the pillar of fire. That's why I come, I preach on a Wednesday. I'm troubled in my heart. I've said these things. I know it's the truth, but I don't know where it's written. Yes. And two weeks down the line, I'm listening to the tape. I call Brother Tando, Brother Tando, come. Amen. 
I'm telling you the truth. I had not listened to, to, to the 144 virgins, uh, to, to the 10 virgins and 144,000 Jews. He says, Pastor, but what you were saying is word to word. I say, I'm not preaching from this spoken word. Look at the spoken words I was quoting. I was quoting false anointed ones in the end time. I was quoting this one. I was quoting faith versus wisdom. I never quoted from the ten virgins. But it's there. It's written word to word. Amen. Can't preach the truth. You can't preach the truth from an end. That's why you find many people have to come back and repent. Behind the pulpit. Have to come back and repent. Because they are preaching without meeting the supernatural. If you preach without meeting the supernatural, you end up saying Hillary Clinton will become president. The prophet says it is no duty of a minister to prophesy who is going to be the next president. He says God is not in the business of election of presidents. And you start saying, yeah, she, she was beautiful when she was young. She's ugly now. My faith is not built around Hillary Clinton. Amen. My faith is not even built about, uh, around, around Trump sending a missile to bomb that general of the Ira Iraqi uh, government. No, man. No, 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 no. Amen. Whether they bomb one another or not, it does not concern me. Amen. We never told to watch Iran anyway. Neither were we told to watch America. You are, you are, search the scriptures. Okay. In them you think, I'll come to that one. I'll show you just now. Scripture has no eternal life. He says, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. Okay, we'll come to that. He says, and they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, they were filled with wrath. What angered them? Jesus is saying, you cannot receive what I am saying unless you are like that widow that is prepared to receive it. Amen. You cannot accept it unless you are like Naaman that is prepared to receive it. Amen. But anyway, I've already told you, a prophet is without honor in his own country. This day, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. To show that what he had said is the truth, they took up to want to throw him because a prophet cannot be accepted in his own country. This is the unedited one. Uh, okay. And notice here again. The, yeah, it's fine. We'll just work with that. If the word is in us and it has come to us as it did Elijah in that, in that day, it will do the same thing that it did. He would feed on the secret things of God, which is hid from the world. Or again, it makes the message and the messenger as one. The spiritual food is ready and it's in the season now. The message and the messenger are one. That's why if people say, no, we don't like what you are saying. But we like you. Why would you want to kill me? Are you hearing me? <laughs> Let's take it the other way. Eh? I love the message, but I, I, there are many things that Brother Brenham did which has mistakes. You, you get what I'm saying? Liar. You, you actually hate me. If you had an opportunity, you would kill me. Because the messenger and the messenger, how do you stop the message? Message. You kill the messenger. You don't stop the message by just saying, okay, we'll not just listen. Let's, let's make him live. No! These people had a revelation. The reason why you see people today arise against the prophet, it's not the prophet they're against, it's the message. Cannot say, I'm still a message pastor, but I'm going to preach to you to show you the mistakes of... I don't want to hear. 
the mistakes of William Branham. Because William Branham, as far as I'm concerned, he had no mistakes. He had no mistakes. Moses had mistakes. Tell me the mistakes of Moses. He hit the rock twice. When God told him to, hit it once. And then Brother Branham comes and says, the first time it symbolized the Passover. The second time it symbolized the atonement. So where is the mistake? If he hit it once, that was going to be the mistake. His disobedience is scripture. Amen. Why didn't God ask Moses at the burning bush? You killed a man there. Why wasn't that conversation addressed? You, you killed a man in Egypt. And you went, you were involved in public fighting. And this woman, Zipporah, that's why when the relatives started wanting to talk about it, they attracted a curse on them. A prophet is the word of God personified. Are you hearing me, somebody? Okay. Brother Hope, get me the correct one. If it's not there, then it's on the, on the, on the laptop there. Amen. Okay. While they're trying to fix that, let's go with the Bible. So Jesus, he says here, in 2 Corinthians 3, 6, listen to this one. Christ has made us. 2 Corinthians 3, 6. He says, who has made us able ministers of the New Testament? Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Okay. So, you mean the letter kills what gives life is the spirit. Yes. That's why God says in Amos 3, 6 and 7. He says, shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people be not afraid? Shall there be an evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? Eh? Did you hear that? Yeah. And the Lord hath not done it. This is exactly what Brother Adio was saying. To say, when God, when Jesus, when the prophet comes and says, the designer of a woman is the devil. You will not find anywhere in the scripture where you will find the devil designing a woman. But it does not mean that statement is wrong. Did you hear that? Now the scripture is addressing that. It says, can there be anything evil? And yet the Lord himself, Jehovah, has not done it. Okay. It says, if there is anything good or anything bad, the Lord has done both. It's also a scripture. It says in the book of Romans, Jacob have I loved, Esau I hated even before they were formed in their mother's womb. And then it comes now, can therefore anything if be imputed again to that God? Now he's saying, if there is anything evil, the Lord has done it. But this is how he has done it. He has not done it because it was his original plan. He has done it because it is the desire of the people. Okay, let me show you. Now, God sends Saul to be anointed by Samuel to become king of Israel. Huh? But God has not chosen Saul. But yet God says, my king, to Saul. God even sends Samuel again and says, so I've rejected him. As if in the first place it was the original will of God. So it has never been the will of God. It has been the will of the children of Israel. When they saw the other nations having kings, they desired to have a king. Do you see? They desired an evil thing and the Lord did it for them. Whose prophet was Baal? He was God's prophet. Yes. When they said, I, 
Can you go and curse Israel? Who did he? Baal did not consult the devil. He consulted God. The same God that Moses was consulting, Baal was consulting. But yet Baal was not a prophet of God. So what he is doing, the Lord has done it. So don't go and curse them. But Baal is a prophet given to the people of Moab by God. But not according to the desire of God. According to the desire of people. That's why the scripture says in Jeremiah, I will give you pastors according to my own heart. So the false pastor is a pastor given by God, but not according to God's heart. So when he says, God says, don't think he's lying, he's telling the truth. But yet he is not the truth. Did you catch that? That's why the prophet preaches of false anointed ones in the end time. The anointing is genuine. But the vessel is wrong. Listen to me. I'll go deeper. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 5 verse 7, it says, it is better to listen to the rebuke of the wise than for a man to listen to songs of fools. The song is right. The vessel is the fool. False anointed ones. In the end time. I can sing Tonolo Fadza here, but I will not allow the worldly singer that same Tonolo Fadza to come and sing it here. But pastor, is the same Tonolo Fadza. It's different now. Because the vessel is different. I can say God bless you and you'll be blessed. If another one says God bless you and it's not the right vessel, you'll be cursed. Baal cannot bless Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The devil wants to bring down the pulpit. It will not come down. Yeah. The letter kill it. But the spirit giveth life. God is wanting to do things, but he wants to do it through the prophet. Is that right? He says, surely the Lord God will do nothing. But he revealeth his secret to his servants, the prophets. Amen. So the secret of God is given to the prophet. Amen. So if you want to know the truth about the letter, you've got to have a prophet. Amen. Let's go. John 5, 38. Are we good, brother? John 5, 38. You will enjoy this. It says, And ye have not his word abiding in you, in you, for he, who he hath sent, him ye believe not, is William Branham, the voice of God. Whom he has sent, you believe not. Search the scriptures. I've heard this scripture being preached that wrong many times. For in them you think you have eternal life. I've heard somebody say, search the scriptures. In them you have eternal life. Brother, you are not quoting. Uh, 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 uh. You are the one quoting it wrong. Jesus said, when you read the scripture, you think you have eternal life, but you don't. The scriptures, they testify of me. In other words, the scripture is a signpost. Which is directing you. It's written Cape Town 50. That's the scripture. If you go to a signpost it's written Cape Town 50 and sit there. You are 50 kilometers away from Cape Town. <laughs> are you hearing me? They testify of me. He says and you will not come to me. Because you are saying you have got the scripture. That he might have life. So where is life? Life is in Jesus. These ones are saying the scripture says. The scripture says no. This day. This scripture is fulfilled. In your eyes. You say we would rather stick to the scripture. Ah. They are message Pharisees today. Message Pharisees. Behold I said who? You Elijah. What God does first, he prepares the widow woman. Amen. That's why in the equation of the sending of Elijah, he starts by you. Amen. I send you, you must be prepared Amen. 
to receive Elijah the prophet. If you are not prepared, you cannot receive him. That scripture is death to you. Hallelujah. He says, I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not love, you have not the love of God in you. I come in my father's name and he received me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Who did, in whose name did William Branham come? In whose name? William Branham says, I met the angel in 1947. He says, I met the angel. This is when he has just, somebody has come with a spirit of deaf and dumb from birth. Brother Branham prays for him. He says, receive your hearing. Receive your speech in the name of Jesus Christ. Now this man has never heard or spoken the rest of his life. And then he goes, do you hear me? Do you hear me? He says, yeah. You see? He says, say, amen. He says, amen. Say, Jesus. He says, Jesus. First time ever in his life. And then he does not say, come here, amen. Come here. No. He says, now let's give God the glory. And then he says, do you notice what I've just done? He says, the reason why I moved away from the mic is I was speaking the three high words of the Bible. The three high words were not a secret of, it's there in the Bible, here. Yeah. The three high words. But he says, no mortal knows about it. The secrets of God are revealed. Ah, can I walk up for a fit? I I go to the three highways. Let your prophet tell us the three highways of the Bible. He says, no mortal knows about it. He says, when I use them, whatever it is, even if the vibrations are not showing, even if the vision is not there, he was given the authority that if he wanted to show off, he could have shown off. And then he comes, he says, the gift of God. Is not for performance. It is not for a show. Was William Branham a voice of God or not? How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do you think that I will accuse you to the Father? Jesus is saying, I'm not going to do that work of accusing you to say that. <laughs> Gentlemen, I told you, judgment is not about saying, we came to Bab's Fontaine, you refused to be baptized. No. No, 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 no. You, you, we're testifying to you. You kept giving us a hard time. Watch where you're going now. You're going to hell, brother. You will not sit on the judgment throne if you have that attitude. Gov on the judgment day, you will not be having your feelings that you are having now. That neighbor, I'm going to see you. You know, there's people in a conversation, somebody starts saying things that you don't like. You start saying, you are going to bend in hell. They will not bend by your speech. Your speech is not what makes them bend. Jesus says, I will not condemn you before the Father. But there's somebody who is going to condemn you. He says, do you think I will accuse you to the Father? There is one that accuseth you. Even Moses in whom he trust. The very Moses that you are saying we believe Moses. He is the one that will accuse you. The, let me show you. Jesus at no point does he take place to condemn the generation that he lives in. After he preached to them and they rejected the message. He says the queen of Sheba will rise in judgment with you. He, he does not take place. What, what he's trying to say is, mm, mm, mm. listen to me, listen to me, listen, listen. That is why he's quoting that Queen of Sheba. He says, Solomon was a gift to the people. And the people accepted the gift of Solomon. And it became a golden age. Was it not so? 
There was no war. There was peace. Brother Bram says it was a type of the millennium. By the coming of Solomon. Now Jesus says, a greater than Solomon is here. I've done miracles. I've shown you wisdom. I've done everything. But you are rejecting my gift. Imagine if they had accepted the gift of Jesus. While Jesus is saying a greater than Solomon is here. What kind of a kingdom could have been established? That's why he's saying the queen of Sheba will rise in judgment with you and condemn you. Because you are rejecting the gift that brings the millennium. And today William Branham comes and preaches a greater than all of them. Including Jesus. Oh. Oh, uh, Yes. Jesus is the one who spoke about the coming of William Branham. He says, Elias, Elias shall truly first come and restore all things. But unto you, Elias has already come. Jesus, the very Jesus that they are quoting, everyone that is taking the Bible to backslide, William Branham will not accuse them before the Father. The very Bible that they hold to find fault in William Branham, it will accuse them. Listen. For had he believed Moses, he would have believed me. For he wrote of me. The scripture is speaking of someone. But if he believed not his writing, how shall he believe my words? So you are unbelievers of the very Moses that you say. You say you would have believed Moses. William Branham is a better prophet than Moses. Moses is a prophet who had a stick that once changed into a snake that he was coming with in church. That's Moses. Moses went and married a Gentile woman when he was a Hebrew. That was Moses. Moses was an angry person. Even the congregation would know that he is now angry. He came down with the very commandments that he was supposed to give them and broke their golden calf in their presence. That was Moses. In the church of Moses, there was a brother who had a small bag. That were, in that bag, there was bones of dead people. In church. That was Moses. Because Joseph had says, bury not my bones in Egypt, but let them be buried in the land of Machapela, the land of the resurrection. So there was a brother. When the cloud moves, don't forget the pig. The pastor has got a stick. We changed into a snake. That's why they can't believe the picture of the pillar of fire. They don't believe Moses. How are you going to believe one who has got a snake? Huh? Okay. Help me, brother, brother Elliot. How are you going to believe one with a snake? In the end. And he's got a brother, his own brother. He says, God has said we should choose a high priest. And then he points to his own brother to say, this is the man that God has chosen. <laughs> and Aaron is saying yes. Amen. And the people say, no, 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 no. You guys are, and then he says, okay, bring your sticks. Mark them. Put them inside and they put them. And then he brings out arons. It has budded leaves and almonds. You think, I think he changed these things overnight. (laughs) Gentlemen, 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 gentlemen. 1947, Brother Branham is saying, when I was about three years old, I had a vision. He says, and in that vision, I saw the construction of the Ohio uh, Bridge. He says, and in its construction, 16 men fell and were buried in there. So, okay, this vision was seen before the construction of the bridge. Is the bridge there in America? And then you come and say, but the men did not die. Ah, my friend. The bridge was not there. Thank you, Brother Elliot. The bridge was not there in the first place. 
You were told by a three-year-old the construction of a bridge. And now you want to say, dispute the building of the bridge first and then we'll come to the, to the tying of the men. Okay, forget about that. How many of you remember the things that you dreamt about when you were three years old? <laughs> Here you are, you are debating with a man who can remember a dream of three years old. <laughs> Gentlemen, the very Jesus whom they claim to believe will rise in judgment and condemn them before the Father. For have they believed Jesus, they would have believed William Branham. Let's go to the quotations, brother. Search the scripture in them you think you have eternal life. Scripture, it points. It points. Can't say, me, I'm a Bible believer. You're not a Bible believer. Because the, the Bible is there to tell you of something that is coming. The people that were sitting in the congregation of Malachi 400 years, sitting in the church, when Malachi said, Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet. I believe there were some people that even stood up in church that day. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I receive. It was not for them. It was for 400 years later. When Isaiah said, A virgin shall conceive. Hallelujah! Praise God. It was not for them. It was for Mary. And after the word became Mary, some continued preaching a virgin shall conceive. After. Luke 17, 30. That is not milk. Revelation 10, 7. That's not bananas. We are no longer taking vegetarian gospel. We are talking meat. Bones. Hallelujah. He says, I wasn't the one that appeared down on the river. I was only standing there when he appeared. I am not the one that performs these things and foretells these things that happens as perfect as they are. I am only one that's near when he does it. The absence of evidence or the lack of it thereof is not evidence. That's very deep. I am saying the absence of evidence. If you send people to Ohio River to go and look for the men that were buried, if you cannot find them, it does not mean they were not buried. The absence of evidence and the lack of it thereof is not evidence. If you cannot prove the virgin birth, if you don't have evidence that proves that Jesus was born by a virgin, it does not mean it's not the truth. Are you hearing me? There are so many things you are going to fail to prove because God never called people to come and prove him. He called people to believe. Whatever seed inside of you is going to be fully manifested. He says... I was only a voice that he used to say it. It wasn't that I knew. It's what I, it's, it's what I just surrendered myself to. That he spoke through. It isn't me. It was the seventh angel. Oh no. It was the manifestation of the son of man. Was it him? No. It wasn't the angel. His message, it was the mystery that God unfolded. It's not a man. It's God. The angel was not the son of man. He was the messenger from the son of man. The son of man is Christ. He is the one that you are feeding on. What are we feeding on? Christ. Not Brother Branham. You are not feeding on a man. A man, his words will fail, but you are feeding on the unfailing body word of the son of man. Amen. This message is the unfailing body word of the son of man. Listen, I am the resurrection and the life. Watch, we said Jesus was not honored where? 
in Nazareth. Watch! Just down in Nazareth. The meanest city in the country. Worse than Chicago probably. Then pretty near as bad as the parallel of Nazareth in my preaching this morning is Jeffersonville. Amen. <laughs> Jesus and William Branham are not honored in Jeffersonville. Amen. Prophet is without honor. Stop to calculating too many things. You offend the Holy Ghost. Listen to what I'm preaching with a pure heart. I've not mentioned any brother's name. You are now mentioning it. He had more success in than he did in. <laughs> Who had more success? Jesus. Yes. Forget. <laughs> here it was not him preaching here. It was Jesus. Amen. Jesus had more success. Jefferson view yes. than he did in Nazareth. Jesus is not dead. He is alive. He is where? Here today. Amen. Brother Branham says, I don't say my ministry is like that of your pastor or of a teacher. He say my ministry is to declare him that he is. If Brother Branham fails to declare that he is here, then he has failed in his ministry. So he says Jesus is the Bible said, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said in St. John 14, 12, he that believeth on me, uh, not the, that makes believe, he that says he believes, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And more than this shall he do, because I go to my father. And I have seen him in my own life. Do more of the same works than he did then, than it is written in the pages of this So, Jesus did more than what is written in the pages of this Bible. In the ministry of William Branham. Who was doing it? Jesus. And it goes over the top of the head of the wise today. And is revealed to the babes such as would learn as Jesus prayed for. Are you babes this morning? That would learn. Not try to calculate, okay. No. Jesus did more in William Branham's life than he did in the life of Jesus in the flesh. I have seen him do more than I have read of him doing in the Bible. More of the same thing. And then Brother Branham says, I used to think greater means more. But greater means greater. He says, Jesus in his earthly ministry never created anything outright. He says he took water and changed it into wine. He took bread and multiplied it. He took fish and multiplied it. He says, but... In this day, outside of nothing, he said, let there be a squirrel. I saw him creating new eyeballs where there was empty sockets. What am I talking about? A greater than all of them has visited us. In every age, we have exactly the same pattern. What? That is why the light comes through God, some God-given messenger in a certain area. Here, here we want to punch up. If those ones that think I can fix this part of the message, you know, revelation is, prog revelation is progressive on the spoken word only. Are you hearing me? Revelation does not progress via left or right. It progresses in the word. <laughs> Ah, I said it before I went to God. I said the only one with the ministry of preservation, we had the pillar of fire is Brother Branham. Every one of us, we don't have that. That's why you must go back to where he said it. You remember the messages that were being preached in the 90s are different from the messages that are being preached today. They are different. But it's still the message. In the 90s, what they were preaching was the message. 2020, what we are preaching is the message. We are not quoting from a second and a prophet. Brother Branham never came back to update it. But the Holy Ghost is now saying, I have been making you see do's and don'ts for a long time. 
It's time you see the mystery beneath the rock. It's time you see the 7,000 under the rock. Yeah. The seals are uh, 1965. Brother Branham says, this week these seals have opened. 1965. I thought they were opened in 63. They open every week. But you see them in the wind. He says the message comes to a God-given messenger in a certain area. And then from that messenger, they spread the light through the ministry of others who have been faithfully taught. If you are not taking it from the messenger, you are not preaching the message. You are not even preaching the Bible. Light is not given to everyone who's got their hands raised. It's only given to one man in an age. And then everyone else will take from him. That means we don't have an eighth messenger. Because whoever in this age must take from William Branham. No matter how much you feel you have preached very good. Brother Branham was not too much of a loud and fast preacher. No. But he was the messenger. Even if you preach and wake the crowd, brother, and people scream and jump and roll on the floor, relax. Relax, you are not the messenger. The messenger is one. Even if your church is bigger than Branham Tabernacle, you are not the messenger. Hear me and hear me well. The messenger is William Branham. He is the voice of God. Hallelujah. You must be faithfully taught. Don't be too quick. I want to go preach. Faithfully taught. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is here to humble us. Because it says, they under, under their prophet messenger, become the final voice to the final church. Don't rush to become the final voice. You must be under. Under the prophet messenger. Say what brother Branham say. Say what the prophet. Don't paraphrase. Don't chop out things. Hallelujah. Bring the true context. That's why I don't take serious ministers that don't listen to the tape. Are you hearing me? I don't take serious. If you preach here and you don't listen to the tape, I can tell this one doesn't listen to the tape. He's a computer preacher. He goes, can't, 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 can't. Seventh seal. 3,200 quotations come out. Three starts picking up truth. No. That's, that is death to the bride. That is unprocessed food. Sit on the table. 47, 48, 49, 50, 50. Listen to the table. Listen to the table. Because when you listen, you get the correct context. You are being faithfully taught. You are being taught patience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. But of course, all those who don't always learn how necessary it is to speak. But of course, all those who go out don't always learn how necessary it is to speak only what the messenger has spoken. If you see a man going out, they are not sincere. They are trying to say other things that the messenger has not spoken. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Your intelligence is not measured by how many educational books and uh, mails and boon magazines that you have read. Your intelligence is measured by the spoken word. Learn to always say what the messenger say. If you are still excited about T.G. Jakes, you go out. If you are still excited about George Smith, you go out. Hallelujah. If you are still excited about Clarence Larkin, you go out. Pastor, but Brother Branham quoted Clarence Larkin. The Holy Ghost knew which part of Clarence Larkin should be quoted. It is William Branham that will go in the Old Testament and tell you Deuteronomy 22 verses 5. Is the part that still applies. Forget about the rest. Not you. You end up having a Sabbath day in the message. You end up saying we don't eat pork in the message. 
Take the messenger's word. Take what he has taught. He is the one that is knows the true interpretation of scripture. Say amen somebody. If you do these things, you will not fail. If you do these things, you will not backslide. Hallelujah. Even if I'm left only one, I'll say what the tape says. Hallelujah. I'll say stay in line. Stay in line. Stay with the teaching of the prophets. We are in treacherous ground. We have an airship of ministers. We have an airship of people. People that have got ideas. People that can debate on what the messenger has already said. The mystery has been spoken in plainness of speech. The mystery of the day is the flesh of William Branham. That's the mystery. Not the words. The words are very clear. That's why God did not take an LLD that comes punctuating the message with words that you have to go back to the Webster. He already went to Webster for us to break down a simple word like presume. Ah, He's already told us to presume is to venture without authority. You don't need to go back to West. Just come and say, don't venture without authority. Who said it? Brother Branham said. Because the Bible says, Moses was preached. I thought the word of God was preached. Yes. But the word of God, when it was being preached, it was Moses. When you preach the word, you say, Moses said. Moses said. Moses said. Every Sunday in the synagogue, it was Moses. And today, it is Branham said. Oh my. The devil is a liar. Oh, we are back again. Don't worry, I'm closing manji manji. I'll close just now. This is too good. This is too good. This is more than receive your house. This is more than receive your car. This is more than receive new shoes. You want shoes? I'm giving you the feet shoes of the feet of the gospel of the truth. You want a belt for the West? I'm giving you a belt of truth. You want a hat? I'm giving you a helmet of salvation. Put on the whole armor of God. This is not feebles of old men. Hallelujah. 2020. We are going for war. We are going into the enemy's camp. We are fully equipped by the message of the hour. We are fighting demons. Cancer is defeated by the message. HIV is defeated by the message. Lies is defeated by the message. Adultery is defeated by the message. The message of the hour is the standard that meets the floods of the devil in this end time. Say amen somebody. When you listen to the message, evil things start falling away. Evil things start falling away. Hallelujah. You won't visit those pornographic sites because you are hearing the voice of God speaking into your ear. You won't, you won't wish for a cigarette. You are hearing the voice of God to tell the people that don't do this, don't do that. It won't help them. Here is the solution. Do this. Listen to the message. Listen to the voice of God. Listen to William Branham. He is the voice of God. Remember, Paul warned people and said, if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write are the commandments of the Lord. What came the word of God out from you or came it unto you only? They, he says, they aid ye and take away ye and soon the message is no longer pure. Brother, if it's not adding up for you, leave it. Don't come and greet me and say, reviewed or not reviewed. There are groups like that now. Eh? This group does not believe the seventh seal is reviewed. This group believes that is reviewed. So when they shake one another's hands at a convention, reviewed or not reviewed. You see? The other one says, not reviewed. They go separate ways. If you say reviewed or not reviewed, I'll say public or private. 
Because Brother Branham says, it is not revealed to the public. Eh? It is not revealed. It's true. But to the public. So I'm asking you, are you public? Or you are private? Do you see what I'm saying? Bride member or church member? And the revival dies down. How careful we must be to hear one One voice for this age. For the spirit, yes, but one voice. Which is the voice of? Brother Prince, one voice. And that voice is not the voice of William Brennan. It's the voice of God. In every age, the spirit speaks to one man. It is important that you hear that man. And you hear only one voice. And that voice is not the voice of men. It's the voice of God. You love the message? The unveiling of God. And each time if you who take the tapes and listen. And I hope and trust that you have had a spiritual understanding of what God has been trying. To get over to the church without saying it right out. This is after Brother Brenham has invited them again because they didn't catch the seventh seal. He says, see, it's a thing. Eh? Sometimes we have to say things in such a way that it might thin down. It might bring some to go out and some to leave and some to ponder over. But what's done, that's done purposely. It must be done that way. This is, this is after he had said uh, there is coming one. In this, he is going to be an old one. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. He is going to be an old one. Amen. I am just preparing a way for him. There cannot be two of us at the same place. I must decrease and he must increase. Hallelujah. He has said that for the eighth messenger. Amen. Eh? He has said that for the eighth messenger. To think that there is someone that is coming. And after he says that, he says, now I hope you are trying, you get what I'm saying without saying it. Amen. We say certain things in a certain way. So that some will go out. And some will think and ponder over it. But it's done purposely. Why is he saying that he is creating the desire of the people? This is the fashion of the devil. They are being created what they desire. Can there be anything good? Can there be anything bad? And the Lord has not done it. The bed is being prepared for the Lord for them. And then after this, he goes on to say, but if there is a message, my message will be the last one. So you mean if there is one that is coming, is coming without a message. If you don't have a message, you are not a messenger. Because to say messenger, in the word messenger, there is message. So if you have no message, you are just a jar. An empty jar. Are you hearing me? Listen, spiritual food in Jewish season. We notice here again in the word, is, if the word is in us, and he has come to us, as it did Elijah in that day, it would do the same thing that it did. He would feed on the secret things of God, which is hid from the world. Oh, again, it makes the message and the messenger as the one, as one. The spiritual food is ready and it's in season now. And each one of you can find, can have this food if you wish it. If you are willing to steal away from all the unbelief of this hour, if you are ready to come into Christ, come into his promise. So you can have the food if you are ready to separate from denominational dogmas and thinking. Now, he says, my commission, this is what I love. He says, now I am just your brother by the grace of God. But when the angel of the Lord moves down, it becomes then a voice of If I offended you by saying that, forgive me. That's Brother Branham. 
But I felt that might have been resented. But I am God's voice to you. If you say, Brother Bram is not the voice of God, you must tell us which angel came down for you to tell us that he's not. He says, see, I say that again. That time was under inspiration. See, I felt bad about it first time, but I repeated it. I had to repeat it because he said it is under inspiration. Some people resented it. And he started feeling bad. And there, he's in, he, if, if, if it was a man, he would have thought, okay, now let me leave this. Because people are, don't like it. He says, but I said it again. I am God's voice to you. <laughs> Demonology in religious realms. Here was a righteous man standing before God said, Lord, you know my heart, but I will, but I will not hear your prayer. Abimelech, take, take her back and let him pray for you. Abimelech has taken Sarah, who is Abraham's wife. Abraham has just said, Sarah is my sister. He has lied. It's his wife. He realized, yeah, there's been a body change. My wife now looks very nice. This man wants, wants my wife. If I say she's my wife, he's going to kill me. Because Abimelech understands the laws of marriage. He cannot marry somebody's wife. You see? So he wants this man to denounce the, the marriage before he can take. So now God is appearing in a dream to Abimelech. Take this woman back to that man. He is my prophet. I will hear him. Yeah. He's a backslider. Yes, he's a liar. But... That's my prophet. Amen. That's the truth. That's the Bible. Amen. Which one are you? Are you wanting to be Abimelech here? To point out, but Abraham lied. Forget about the lies of Abraham. Amen. I will not hear you with your righteousness. Amen. I will hear him. Yes, he is my prophet. Amen. He is my prophet. And Sarah was Abraham's sister. It was his half-sister. But it had come a time to change from calling her sister to call her wife. Just like God. When the seals were being preached, he says, now I'm going to call you bride. That's in the first seal. He says, I will call you bride so that you can understand what I'm saying. In other words, with change of position comes a better responsibility. Do you see? There are certain things you don't just speak about when you're in courtship. Eh? You see? There's not too much amens. You were saying everything in courtship. I want to do this. You are my this. You are my carrot cake, my Lamborghini. Some of the things you hold back. When you engage, the gear changes. When you wed, the gear changes. With change of name comes change of responsibility. That's why people graduate and are called junior doctor. Eh? You can now work shadowing a real doctor. Unless the real doctor said you can take over the case. But you wake shadowing a real doctor. Until you become a real doctor. Some things we are saying them without saying them. Is that right? Let's close with this one. We haven't seen him, Jesus. But we have felt him. We know him now. As much as our limit, limiting senses can let us. But one day it will be face to face. For which age? <laughs> uh, you know these people, the way you are looking at these quotations, 
They are in the spoken word. You, you see, that's why I'm putting titles here. <laughs> you can go and search these things. People are like, you. We will see him in this age. Didn't Pastor, Pastor uh, uh, Madiba balance the appearing and the coming? Yes. He is coming at the end of this age. Partial realization will be made perfect realization. Complete realization. William Branham came to declare Christ that we can see him in this age. And when he appeared in 1963, came down seven angels. Eh? He says, he preaches first. You see the supreme judge. Do you see his wig and everything? But he turns, he says, turn the picture to the right. When he says, turn the picture to the right, this is when it had come out on the 17th of May in Life magazine. Amen. Eh? And the Bible says, on the 17th of May in Genesis magazine, Amen. Noah walked into the ark. 17th of May. Because the scripture says, in the second month, on the 17th day, the second month is May. The first month is Abib, April. 17th of May. The prophet says, turn the picture to the right. He's no longer showing you the wig. He says, do you see the eyes? Do you see the, 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 the beard? Do you see the nose? Who do you see? That's my redeemer. We are no longer in partial realization. We are in complete realization. 2 Corinthians 3, when it continues, it says, now we see in a glass darkly. After it has spoken about taking off the veil, he says, but then we shall see face to face. Amen. Eh? What is Brother Branham talking about? What is the Bible talking about? We shall see face to face. And then he says, there was a child that was living in a rural place. This child was living with his mother and then his father he had a little mirror. He says, that little mirror which only showed the mouth when you are shaving. This is Brother Branham speaking. Okay, the little mirror that only shows the mouth when you are shaving. He says, so the boy could not see himself on that mirror. And one day they left the rural areas to come to the city, to the big city with lights. So this means this boy is coming from a slower dimension, coming to a faster dimension. He's coming from a place where you only see the mouth. And the prophet tells us the mouth is a Pentecostal uh, representation because it is the mouth that speaks in tongues and prophesies in the restoration of the gifts. It is the legs that is the horse and bargain. It is the chest which is the, the Wesleyan edge. But the mouth is the Pentecostal. He says, but we are in the last moving faculty, which is the intelligence, the head. That's Brother Branham. So he says, he comes from the rurals and then he comes to the auntie's place in the city. And the boys, I've never seen a house with seven steps. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So Brother Branham is not trying to count the steps in the house. Yeah. Just like when he preaches the pyramid, he tells you there are seven steps to the king's chamber. If you go and read, you see the steps will go over a hundred. There. But it's seven. Because there are steps that are in between that join the main. There are steps that are in between that join again the main. There are steps that are in between that join the main. So Brother Brian says the house has got only seven steps. He's talking about the seven major steps from faith to brotherly kindness. He says when he got to the last step, there was a full-size mirror. He says when he got to the full-size mirror, he saw, he noticed there was a boy that was in the mirror. And he waved his hand. The boy waved his hand. And he went around trying to check at the back. Said, There's nothing. He came back. He looked. The boy looked. He kicked. The boy kicked. He waved both. The boy waved both. He said, Mama! Mama! That's me! What is he seeing? He is seeing himself in the mirror of the word. From partial realization to perfect realization. When we shall see him, we shall be like him. Amen. We are in the bride coming of Christ. Brother Branham says, we are in the mystery of uh, Christ is the mystery of God is, is revealed. He says we are living in the age of the bride where he is coming in. Let's stand upon our feet. <clears throat> Amen. There's never been a day like this day.
to me there's never been a day like this day I see there's never been a light that shines so bright like this day this glory say there's name this name for being a day like this day to, to me there's name for being a day like this day I see oh there's been a light that shines so bright like this day, this glorious day, say for Christ, for Christ is revealing himself. Say he has opened my eyes and now I can see. Say his way is becoming a reality in this day, this glory. To me, saints, he has opened my eyes, and now I can see. Sing his word is becoming a reality that's in this day. This glory one more time say this day his name for me in a day like this day to me says this name in a day like this day So bright like this day, oh, his glory. Say, Christ is revealing himself for Christ, for Christ is revealing himself. Say in this day of this glory. Let's sing it one more time. Say for Christ, for Christ is revealing Himself to me. He has opened my eyes. Can see his way is becoming a reality in this day, this glorious day.
Christ our Redeemer died on the cross died for the sinner paid all his due come on sprinkle your soul with the blood of the land and now pass
in our lives we have believed the one voice which is the voice of God which is the voice of the Alpha and the Omega the voice that spoke in the beginning of the ages is the voice that is speaking again in the end of the ages brother Branham says there must be yet another Ephesians and here we are in another Ephesians a manifestation of the glory of the first church you are Alpha Brother Nev, give us the right key. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, my Lord. You are worthy to be praised. I'm giving 
ear to the voice. The voice that's been sent in this day. The voice of God. Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I want to be shaped and be molded. Because it is that voice that has got the secret to the rapture. It is that voice that's got the secret to overcoming. It is that voice that's got the secret to your breakthrough. You say, Lord, I believe him. I believe your prophet. I believe your message. Unreservedly. With all my heart. I know where the scripture is testifying. Of whom it's talking about. And I want to accept it with all my heart. You can raise your hand to him. I want to ask brother Noah to come in. Commit the hands that's lifted up to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. You can give me my hand. Let us pray. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, we are thankful this afternoon, oh God, for your presence and service, oh God. We are thankful for visiting us, oh Father God, in such a special way, Savior Divine, oh God. Father God, you coming, Father God, to make known unto us, oh Father God, that we have one voice in this end time, oh God. At a time, oh Savior Divine, where men are raising, Father God, to speak against Malachi 4, Father God. But you have come this afternoon, oh God, to declare unto us, oh God, that this is the final voice to the final age, oh God. And we've been called in this hour, Father God, to stand like that we do, that was of the caliber of Elijah, oh God, as prepared vessels, oh God, prepared believers, oh Father God, to stand with this message in this end time, oh God. Father, realizing how much time is first spent, oh God, but we've got this sure promise, oh God, to know that this message will never fail, oh God. To know that this tape teaching, oh God, will take us all the way to the body change, oh God. Father God, it's a sure promise. And as believers in this hour, we are holding on to that, oh God. And wavering, Father God, trusting that he that gave the promise is more than able to accomplish it, oh God. The same God, the same Melchizedek, oh God, that stood with Abraham, oh God, coming down in this hour to make himself unknown in our midst, oh God, and Savior divine, with believing us, oh God, with trusting us, oh God, we hold on to this message, oh God, we hold on to these promises, oh God, as the seed of Abraham, oh God, and you say the seed of Abraham we will possess the gates of the enemy, O oh God. And we stand this hour, Father God, as them, O oh God, that are also the seed of Brother Branham, O oh God. The seed of the prophet message, O oh God. And we are standing, O oh God, knowing that everything that we desire in this hour, our victory in this hour, our overcoming power in this hour, our body change, oh, yeah. oh Father God. Yes, our sir. healing, O oh God, yes, Lord. is hidden in this very yes, message, O oh God. Yes, and Lord. we will stand believing thank like our Father Jesus. Abraham, thank you, who staggered not as the promise of God, O oh Father, yes. but was strong in faith. Father God, we'll continue this journey being strong in faith, holding on to the same promises, holding on to the same word, oh God, holding on to the same oh. messenger's word, oh God, that's been declared in our day, oh God. The final voice in this day, oh God. Yes, sir. The voice of the living God. Yes, sir. Speaking in our day. The voice of the living God ministering to our very lives, oh God. Mm. We raise our hands, oh God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Divine. The devil might have tried to spray us with unbelief, oh yes, God. Lord. But we come this afternoon yes, to hide under the rock. Yes. To hide under the rock of faith, oh, oh God. Lead me to Where we rock. are kept safely, yes, Father. Lord Jesus. To hide under the message, yes, oh God. Lord, God. Where we are kept, oh Father, away from the things of the world. Yes, Lord. Oh God. Hide us in your Shekinah glory. Hide us in your presence. Hide us in your word, oh God. Where we can find strength and victory, oh God. Savior divine, we pray that you bless our precious pastor, oh God. In this hour, Father God, for standing, Father God, 
in preaching the message of us. Thank you. In an unauthorized manner, Father God. Amen. Despite the criticism that may come, oh God. Oh, yes, Lord. Still, he has spoken it, oh Father. Thank you, Jesus. And he has taken his stand, oh Father. Yes, Lord. To declare, oh God. Yes, Lord. That William Brand yes. is the voice is the voice of oh God. God. Amen. We thank you, Father God. Thank you, For Jesus. such an inspiration. We thank you, Father God. For such a decision, oh God. We thank you, Savior Divine. For we understand it was William Branham, oh God. In one day, Savior Divine, that made a decision, oh God. And you came down and you said, oh Father, this is that that shall bring the tremendous victory, even in love divine, oh God. I pray as well for his ministry. May you also bring the tremendous victory, Father God, even in love divine, oh Father. I pray for the confirmation of oh Jesus. God. I pray for a special blessing of oh God. So Hallelujah. We understand in your body. Thank you, Jesus. You have respect unto men that stood with your word, oh Father. Savior divine. And you uplifted them, oh Father God. In an adoption ceremony, Thank oh God. Jesus. Above everybody else, oh God. To say, this is my son. Father God, I pray as well, oh God. May you come down as well, oh God, and bless this ministry, Father. And have respect unto this brethren, oh God, for standing on your word, oh Savior divine. I praise you, go back home, oh Father. Be with us, oh God. Strengthen us in this faith, oh Father God. Strengthen us in this, in this rapturing faith, oh God, to hold on until our body change, oh God. Bring us such a conviction, oh God, such an impact of revelation, oh God. To know, Savior Divine, that this message lays our victory and our overcoming power, Father. We pray, Father God, as we commit all things in thy hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. The floodgates of heaven. Let